Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here, Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan, and with us today is the Cherokee Grey Wolf 29TE, which obviously stands for Tadward Edward. Um, maybe not. The, uh, actually I think it stands for triple bath entry, but this is a really fun model. Uh, 6,560 pounds dry weight as it sits today. It'll weigh about three to 350 pounds more in black label. And I've got a, a full black label video of one of these already recorded. I will leave the link to that in the video description. Please watch this. Let me know what you like or dislike. Um, and then watch the black label one and let me know which one you would prefer if, you know, it was your money on the line. This is a really fun model. It gives us an awesome private triple bunk room, a full size camp kitchen with an epic mega fridge that is really hard to find and it gives us a forward position bathroom with a shower instead of a rear bathroom with a tub all of that stuff is hard to find in this specific combination which is i think why the tedward edward is so popular i do want to give you a little caution though on potential uh towing of this one 6560 pounds sounds very half ton towable if that's all it was, it would be fine. This is a long trailer. It'll be longer than a lot of half tons are going to be comfortable handling. So I just want to kind of throw that out there. You know, towing really varies a little bit by situation, by person. Please give our team a call. Let us get the chance to know you so we can provide some more personalized towing suggestions so we can always make sure we're putting your safety before the sale at Haywood RV. Enough about that though. Let's get inside. And I love this layout. I love all the, the big living space, the nice private sleeping space, the bathroom having a shower instead of a tub. There's things that this one does very well. That killer big camp kitchen, for instance. However, it's a tricky one for me to try to put on camera. There's something about just the way that this one is shaped. It's, it's tricky to, to really give everyone a good perspective of everything that it offers at one time. So I thought I'd actually begin by giving you a sort of a, a twist and shout look around this one. First, uh, we, we see that big, like almost seven foot, what I'm going to call true U dinette. It is a bigger U dinette that more people can sit at comfortably, including adults. It can fold down into a bigger sleeper. But with the private bedroom, I don't think you're going to be needing that a whole heck of a lot. If you choose to add some entertainment, perfect space on the wall there for it so that everybody in the living room has a good look at it. We'll get to our kitchen stuff in just a second. A couple key little details, though. You got that uh, red disconnect switch. That's part of the Cherokee juice pack, the solar package, to keep your battery from getting drained when you're not using it, you know. And the converter on these, the 55-amp converter, actually uh, is lithium battery compatible, which, wouldn't you know, we're a battle-born dealer here at Halid RV. If that is something you're looking for, we can get you. Up top here, though, this is a big deal feature, I think. Cherokee is the first in this class, I know of at least, that has standardized the use of a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. So you don't have to pay more to upgrade to it. They're using a bigger, better air standard. It's centralized to give you even cooling in that private, you know, front and rear sleeping spaces, that, uh, that you know, separated bathroom. Not to mention the fact that uh, when you standardize something, you control the cost of it better and you improve quality through repetition. Uh, man, the, the, the black stainless kind of look they got on that refrigerator. That is just something else, isn't it? And I love, love this huge pantry they have right here next to the refrigerator. And I mean, look at the size of it. It basically matches the size, maybe slightly bigger actually, of that 10.7 cubic foot DC compressor fridge right there. That big fast cooling travel safe uh, family friendly fridge situation you got going on. And in a bunk model like this where you got more people, you are going to appreciate the extra cold storage capacity that it has. By the way, some really good lighting here in the kitchen. I'm so tall that very often uh, it, it's hard to see the extra lights that Cherokee does under the overhead cabinets there. Easy reach outlets. You see that dual purpose cutting board uh, backsplash. Uh, you could use it as a, a little bit of a like charcuterie palette. Um, you know, a little wine and cheese action. Ooh, that might be fun, actually, if you're uh, doing the little harvest host thing. If you don't know what that is, Google that. That is a, uh, a, a, a classy experience. I'm a little bit more of a Coors Light kind of guy, but hey, to each their own, everybody camps. Wastebasket space in the most logical location possible. And Cherokee always does two big drawers instead of uh, small ones, which I really like because it's, it's far more like spatula friendly. But if we're gonna talk about big drawers, then we have to talk about what's going on here under the dinette with these dual 40 inch full extension 5 8 plywood box drawers here. Even a plywood front, that is something some brands will try to save a buck on and they'll just use the, the front of the door or drawer itself to, uh, you know, to kind of fill in the box. Cherokee fully boxes out all of their drawers and then they give you a nice frontage on that. By the way, 
all of the countertops in this, whether it's that dining table in the bathroom that we'll see in a minute, or over here in the kitchen, they are all a sealed edge press membrane. So if you do happen to spill something, no big deal. You can just wipe it up, go back to camping. You have to really go out of your way to damage those countertops. It can be done, challenge accepted. I could do it, but I don't think you're gonna want to. <laughs> Now, if you're curious about travel access, hang tight a little bit. When, uh, before we step outside, I'll actually get the slides closed and really show you around there. Now, uh, this, this private rear bunk room is something a lot of people really like. It gives us three separate individualized beds. And I like being able to do this on video so I can get you around those tight little corners to show you some of those details that sometimes a still frame camera can't catch, like the extra USB plugs there. The uh, outlets above that stand, some TV hookups, you know, whether the kids are gonna be charging a phone, a tablet, or if you let them bring some entertainment, you can. These windows do not open for airflow. That is one of those things that, again, if I could make a little change, there's a couple things on this bunk room I would prefer to change. I wish those windows open for airflow, and I really hope you folks appreciate the fact that I'm willing to point that stuff out, the kind of stuff that sometimes people might not like, because what I don't want you to do is drive from like four hours away to come see the RV you thought you liked and then go, oh man, I don't want you to settle. I want you to know up front, and I hope you appreciate that kind of transparency. And I want you to get to see inside all the storage as well, because that is something that this room does fairly well, especially considering they have all the shelving space inside here. I'm trying to remember, I feel like in years past, this was wide open. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I see so many campers, but I feel like they didn't used to have those doors there. Whether they did or they didn't, they do now. And that I think really significantly adds to like the, the storage effect in this RV, because if you got, you know, all kinds of shirts and stuff, kids take up so much space. That lower shelf down there could be an amazing place for kids to put their shoes, especially considering it's, you know, right here next to the entry door, which by the way, have you noticed has its own full viewing window. But when we step outside, that's gonna magically disappear in the same way that Lucky Charms are magically delicious. Now back to the living room, couple things I wanna point out here. If that slide light is a little aggressive for you, you can turn it off. And you know, I almost think I prefer the look of it in here with that off. I think it could be a decent nightlight, but getting that almost oversaturated blue out of here, how good does this look? Uh, and actually, I would like some feedback on that. Cherokee uh, went went very stately with their interior decor. They have those, uh, you know, the darker cabinets, but everything else is very, very light. And a lot of times when I see darker cabinets, I, I, uh, I hear a lot of people say, oh man, it feels dark, it feels oppressive, it feels so claustrophobic. But everything else is so light and creamy and airy. Personally, I think it works out pretty nicely. Now, a cool thing is the way this living room is set up, if you do put a TV right there, if people come and go from the rear entry door where we're standing currently, you know, they need to get to the kitchen, they need to get to the fridge, they never interrupt the flow of the entertainment. You never have to walk in front of that person. A lot of manufacturers who make the version of this floor plan, the sofa and the dinette will actually be flip-flopped. So, you know, you're always walking past the entertainment to get to anything. And you don't have to do that here. It just makes more sense to me. And you say, yeah, but what about the bathroom? That's one of the cool things. This is actually what the TE in the Tedward Edward stands for, triple entry. It has a triple entry bathroom. We're at door number one, door number two, door number three. Tell him what he's won, Gene. <laughs> Who is Gene, by the way? Anyway, big XL vent fan here in the bathroom. Um, and and that, that full window here, Cherokee just does the same door in every door. I they just use the same hardware. I think you know what I meant to say. I know what I said sounded stupid, so I'm going to just start moving on because this is like, you know, when I say something dumb uh, in front of my wife, I'm like, I can fix it if I just keep using more words. And obviously, <laughs> no, no, I can't. My track record proves that. But if you're not hot to trot on that door, it is very easy to cover up that window. But, you know, you can get uh, to this bathroom from everywhere. And what I like about a forward bedroom or bathroom like this is that it gives us that nice radius shower instead of a, a common travel trailer tub uh, back near the bunks. So there's, you know, there's benefits both ways. But what do you folks think? Do you prefer having a forward bathroom with a shower or a rear bathroom with a tub? You know, it, it, it kind of just depends on what you're looking for. The rear bath with tub eats up less space in the RV is why a lot of manufacturers do it. Um, by the way, decent headroom in here. I'm tall enough. I do need my head in the bubble and some really solid leg room in front of here and room to get dressed when you get out of the shower. That is something that I like to look for. There's also a totally separate kind of 
hallway light right here, which I really like, sort of acting like a little bit of a, a nighttime beacon, if you will. I'm gonna back up just a step, because there's two instances here where I actually think the uh, this floor plan could potentially be a little more desirable in the standard series here versus the black label due to the fact that you get sliding max airflow windows in the standard series that we're looking at. Black label will give you all sleek, amazing tinted frameless windows, but this tall window here and the big tall window we're about to see in the bedroom in the black label series do not open. And once again, that's the kind of detail stuff that some people might not like that I will go out of my way to share with you here at Halen RV. I hope you folks appreciate that. Uh, up front here, we've got that uh, walk around. That is a short queen, by the way, 74 inch long, 60 inch wide. There is room here. If you wanted to go with a long queen, you could. It will eat into your walk around space a bit, but it's kind of up to you to juggle like, hey, which one of those factors is more important to me? You feel like some bedroom entertainment? Well, you could throw yourself a TV on the wall here. You see your hookups. I love that big window. You'll have the same size window in the standard or black label. And remember, if you check the link in the video description, I've left you some footage uh, or a link to some uh, footage of a, uh, a black label model where you can kind of compare them. And I would really like to know, which way would you like to go, folks? Do you like the standard series? Would you prefer that black label smexy luxury with all the shiny skin and windows that they offer? Now, if you need to get to the bedroom or the bathroom when you're in transit, remember you have that front entry door straight into the bathroom, which has a door to the bedroom. So the question becomes, what about the living area? Well, if you're a real skinny manny, you can fit through here, but the good news is uh, <laughs> you don't have to go on Jenny Craig anytime soon. Because thankfully, you've got the rear door to the main living cabin right here that'll allow you to, you know, get in and easily walk between the uh, the countertop and the, the tabletop right there. Get to the fridge, get to the pantry. Very handy for like a travel food stop if you need to uh, make a little travel potty stop. The question becomes, what about the bunk room? And it doesn't have really any access in transit. That is, the if, if I could change something on this RV, something that I, I wish would be revised, is if that door would swing inward, it would mean that they'd have to kind of shift the entry door a little bit, because if you just pivot it on the other side, it wouldn't fit. But I, I hope you appreciate the fair and candid way that we present stuff here. I'm even willing to show you something that I, I think could be improved or maybe I don't like. And if you appreciate that kind of transparency candor and the fact that, you know, we take the time to close the slide to show you around, hit that subscribe button, follow along to us here at Halid RV. And when you're ready, give our team a call because, you know, if we ain't selling them, we ain't making more videos, guys. Starting outside here under the bed, just to give you a look at all the storage, a neat little thing Cherokee does is in their, their pass-through compartments where you have uh, the exposed framework right there. They hit it with a really heavy dose of an anti-wicking treatment because when you wake up in the morning and there's condensation and dew on that door and you flip it up like this, it wants to dribble down. And they want to make sure that it doesn't have a little mold spot, it doesn't rot out right there. They're taking care of this thing. Now, a really uh, cool fact on Grey Wolf RVs is they actually ride on a lower setting chassis, which is why it has a two entry step instead of a three. That right there also means a lower exterior height, lower clearance, a little less headwind, it, uh, which is very nice on a long trailer like this. I mentioned that when we first started. She does have quite a bit of length to her. You wanna make sure that you can handle it safely. Um, up front here, this has the Cherokee Quick Jack. Basically uh, eight seconds up and down with a handy little uh, cordless drill is all it takes to operate this thing. And that same drill will also operate your corner jack. So you can uh, basically cut your campsite uh, setup time in half compared to doing all that manually. If you are looking for something like a power tongue jack, that will be standard on the Black Label series. And if you want to save the money and just get a power tongue jack put on one of these, you give our team here at Halo RV a call and we'll get you camping. She is slide owning ready if you choose to slap a set of those things up there. And below the bunk, that lower bunk on the driver's side that we saw, it is pure storage. Um, because Cherokee mounts their water heaters forward in the RV, it gives them the ability to always put storage under their bunks, which is handy. Speaking of storage, you got some sweet outside storage with that folding cargo rack that has a 200 pound capacity, by the way. I will mention though, that is before you apply the spare tire to it like we've done. The spare tire is actually an uh, a, a independent option, amazingly. I hope you never need it, but we always put them on the RVs here at Halid RV so that God forbid something happens, your family's going to be able to, you know, at least get back home, get to the campsite, do whatever, and then worry about a spare tire replacement later. Notice that third brake light? 
That is new, uh, even since the time that I recorded the black label footage of this camper, which by the way, don't forget to click over to that after this to check that out. Similarly, you see that factory, now factory standard rear view observation camera right below that walkable roof decking right there. Uh, that, that's one of those things that once people see it coming from the factory, they almost go, why doesn't everybody do that? Why isn't that required by law for safety? And I don't know, but I love the fact that Cherokee is stepping up for us. So you've got the power awning for like our main patio coverage. You've got some TV hookups there. As you step back, the camp kitchen's extra large door is basically acting like its own cover. And I'm tall enough, I can walk right under this thing with no problem. So there's no ducking required over here. That refrigerator though, OMG. I love that thing. That is huge. It is that, okay. So we have a 10.7 cubic foot compressor fridge inside. That is 5.7 cubic foot of additional fridge and freezer space. There's a weird thing about this though. The fridge inside is 12 volt. It works in transit. It works easy if you're off grid. That is 110 only. You need park power or generator to operate that. It seems like a weird mismatch. Uh, it, and some people might like that, some people might not. I'm just trying to give you the information so that you can make the best, most educated decision possible. If you appreciate that, that we go out of our way to proactively answer those kind of questions, please hit that subscribe button. Please leave us some comments and say, hey, thanks for shooting us straight on that fridge. Thanks for not trying to snowball me into that stuff. We will always do our best to give you the most information we can here. So what do you think, folks? Does she get your vote? <laughs> Tedward Edward 2024. <laughs> I can see the signs of the yards now. Um, but I tell you, you know, what do you think about it? Because I, I love the privacy. I love the space. I love the storage. Um, that, that easy entry bathroom with a shower, the big camp kitchen in that fridge. I love all those things. I do wish I could get to the bunk room in transit. I wish the bunk room windows open for airflow. But overall, I think it brings so much more to the table than those, those couple little quirks. But that's my point of view. How do you guys see it? Leave me some feedback and let me know, good, bad, ugly, and otherwise. What's your what's your take on this one? And as always, remember, we don't do hidden fees at Halet RV. We only do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halet camping, everyone. Give our family-owned and operated team here a call when you're ready to go camping. Tedward Edward 2024. <laughs>